Welcome to our second lesson about working with meshes. There's three types of meshes, a solid mesh, a shell mesh, and a beam mesh. The solid mesh is the one represented by the 3D tetrahedron element, and we covered that in our previous lesson. The shell mesh is represented by a 2D triangle shell element. The beam mesh is represented by a one-dimensional beam element. Each mesh has its appropriate uses. The solid mesh is suitable for bulk models. The shell mesh is suitable for thin geometry, such as sheet metal. The beam mesh is suitable for modeling structural members. In my graphic area, I've got a sheet metal part. Let's begin by going to the Simulation tab. Let's start by creating a new study. Study Advisor submenu, New Study. Let's accept the default parameters, OK. The icon that you see here represents a shell mesh. Let's apply a fixture, material, and a load. Right-click, Apply Edit Material. Let's use AISI 1020. Now right-click Fix Geometry. Select this face, click OK. And let's apply a load. Let's say 5 pounds applied to this face, here. And let's click OK. Lastly, let's right-click on Mesh, select Create Mesh. We'll accept the default parameters and click OK. Notice SolidWorks created a thin surface. If I mouse to the side of this surface, we can see a representation of the sheet metal. The location of the surface is basically at the center of the sheet metal's thickness. Let's rotate my model a little bit. Notice that the front and back have different colors. Basically, this shell has two sides. It's important that we've got the same color on one side. Let me select this face here. Now let's right click on the mesh and select Flip Shell Elements. Now we've got inconsistency with the silver on the front and the bronze on the back side. Let's restore our mesh to its previous setting. Right click, select Flip Shell Elements. Now even though we've got a thin surface representing our sheet metal, the program does take thickness into consideration. What this approach does is resolve the greatest number of elements which match consistently. Let's view the details. Right-click on Mesh in the Study tree and select Details. The total number of elements is about 4,700. Let's run the study now. Close the Detail window. Run. And as we see, the maximum stress is about 16,000 PSI. Let's create a factor of safety plot. Define factor of safety plot. Accept the default values. Our factor of safety is approximately 3.3. Let's click OK to exit that. Now let's duplicate this study. Right click on the tab and select Duplicate. Let's call it Study 2. And we'll click OK. At the bottom of the screen, we've got a second study tab. All the parameters were copied directly from the first study. Here, I'll change the shell mesh to a solid mesh. Right click, treat as solid. We need to redefine the mesh as well. Right click, create mesh. Yes, it's OK to delete the previous results. Let's reset to the default values and click OK. Now let's check how many mesh elements we ended up with. Right-click, Details. We've got a total of about 9,800 elements. That's about twice as many as with the shell mesh. Let's run our study again. Our maximum stress is shown at about 18,000 PSI. Let's check the factor of safety. 
Double click here. 2.8 is our factor of safety. Now let's take a look at the beam mesh type. Just go to another window. In my graphic area, I've got two structural members. Let's create a new study. Since I've got two separate bodies here, solid body one and two, I can assign material to each body individually. Or I can click at the part level and assign material to an entire part. AISI 1020, apply and close. Right click on fixtures, fix geometry. Now I'm going to click on these two joints and click OK. External loads, let's use force. Selection type, let's use joints. Select this one. Direction. Select this sketch line. And force magnitude, let's make it 100 pounds. We can see the force direction with this arrow. Check here to reverse if needed. And click OK. Lastly, right click Create Mesh. Notice how we didn't have any options to adjust. The one dimensional beam mesh is now created. Let's run a study. And here are our results. This concludes our second lesson on creating a mesh.